What's up, everyone? It is Derek G Speaks Volumes, and we have another very, very, very exciting guest on the podcast today. Say hello to one Mr. Shervin Linez. Hello. Hello. Hello to you and to your listeners. Hi. You are coming to us from where exactly? Please tell us. The Big Apple, also known as New York City, more specifically Brooklyn, more specifically Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Lovely. I yeah. do like when I moved, when I lived in New York and I, I hadn't checked out Williamsburg, I didn't know where to go exactly. And I missed the main street completely. <laughs> well, you know, I, I've lived here for 11 years and I still don't know where to go. So, oh, really? Yeah. So it's an ever changing sort of transient place. This is why we're not a, uh, a city guide podcast, but we're going to talk about <laughs> music. So allow yeah. me to introduce yourself a little, and I'd love you to do the same. But uh, Shervin and I, we've worked together a tiny little bit. Um, Shervin is an incredible music photographer who has photographed any relevant artist that you can imagine, Shervin has photographed. And I was just saying to Shervin <laughs> off camera, uh, or on camera, but not on recording, that uh, his Instagram, there seems to be a post every other day and it just blows my mind who you photographed. And uh, we were talking recently about having you on the podcast and I'm so, so thrilled to have you on. So welcome to this podcast. Thanks, man. I'm a big fan. I uh, also told you off camera that you're watching your career do what it's doing is so cool and... Um, Probably scary for you, but cool for me to watch. It's because uh, yeah, you didn't you knew me as I didn't really have as much of a following, and it's just yeah, you were the art director, creative director when we met, and then I made the mistake of googling you and found out you are in fact a international celebrity. <laughs> Hardly, I'm an internet personality. I think is as far as we can go with me. Well, I'm um, impressed, you know. <laughs> Like enough about me, but like, how yeah. do you, uh, how would you introduce yourself? I guess, this, you know, if, if you're, you know, in the cabs and someone asks what you do, how do you talk about what you do? Well, you know, I usually say, um, I say music photographer, which in itself is pretty confusing for people because I think people, people think that is a concert, concert photographer. Oh, but true. And the next thing they ask is, oh, so you shoot concerts? And I, I immediately tell them I, I actually don't at all. So it's a very specialized music photography, but um, that would be, yeah, that's the best way to describe it. I think it's just, uh, I take portraits of musicians, essentially. Can you give us a little list for, or, or should I embarrass you? I think you should do it. <laughs> I've got a little list, but I'm sure it's not. That's fine. Uh, Billie Eilish, uh, Willow Smith, Paramore, uh, Boy Genius, Regina Spector, St. Vincent, Maggie Rogers, Tame Impala, Panic at the Disco, Phoenix, Ellie Goulding, Alabama, Shake, Alabama Shakes, Tegan and Sarah, Broken Social Scene, Japanese Breakfast, the, that Japanese Breakfast stuff I love. Or I love all of your work, but you know that stuff is really special. That's just to name a few. Um, who have I missed that you're like, you didn't mention so-and-so? Oh my God. Come I don't on. know. I, I really, um, the funny thing about music is I never know what musician is impressive to who, because I don't know what, I don't know who people know. Yeah, true. So there have been times where I, you know, I'm trying to sort of like talk about people I've shot and it just falls on, com you know, a completely blank stare. Someone just doesn't know the people I'm mentioning. And there's other times where I, um, the opposite happens where someone knows every single band and it's just, it's impossible for me to gauge and I, I hate to presume. So it's like, I just assume that no one knows these bands and, you know, because I, I, I primarily shoot um, independent or alternative musicians. Right. So um, it's, it's always a, it's like a weird guessing game when you're at Thanksgiving and, you know, asking if your uncle has heard of David Byrne and, <laughs> and, you're, and you're, yeah. And, 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 and Sometimes he has and sometimes he hasn't. So you're like, you know, I just, I play it safe. I try and play it safe. That's smart. Who, who, give, give me, if you want to impress the one random person in the room, what do you say, Billie Eilish? Because she's just I, I say list. Lizzo. I say Lizzo. Ah. Because I think that she's, um, I think she's just universally known. In a, her, that one name is known enough and adults like her and kids like her. And it's, she's just like sort of everywhere. So I think... 
That's my go-to. And then if they don't know Lizzo, they're certainly not going to know Tame Impala. So I, I, I just, I, I try and just go, I, I shoot bands, <laughs> you know, like I don't, I don't like to, uh, I don't like to make a big um, thing of the names because, you know, a lot of these people are just sort of in and out of my life in a, in a, um, in a, in a, in a way, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know them. Some of them I'm close with, some of them I'm not. And I, and I, I don't like to lean on the, their names too much because it's like, you know, it just feels like sort of climby or something, you know? Well, good on you. I think a lot of people would do that. And, um, but the, as you know, with this podcast, I like to generally have some sort of thesis or, or topic to explore. And, um, from a personal perspective, I'm still learning how to do that in a way that like isn't trying to inter- corner paint someone into a corner of like we're talking about this and not that. Right. But I think that the very clear thing for us as the topic to to really unpack a view as a music photographer is what music looks like, how to ex- express sound through visual, through photography specifically. Yeah. And I want to break it down into these categories, if if we may. Um, your background yeah. and your or training or lack thereof to get where you are, um, the process of what it, how one captures musicians, artists, and um, the the vibe and mood and and ego that might surround that. Um, I'd love to hear stories about some of the photographs you've taken, and lastly. I don't know. I know that a lot of young creative people listen to to this podcast as well. So I'd, I'd love for you to share any wisdom as well. So how does that sound? Great. Let's do it. Wonderful. So your background. Um, I think it's really important, anyone's context as to how they came to be and how, uh, you know, you've established yourself to the point where you ha- you're working with, like you said, a lot of alternative independent artists and capturing and people f- trusting you to express their sound through photography. So I think background is really important. So where do we start? Uh, I know that you didn't study photography, so maybe we start there. Yeah, I grew up in Northern Virginia, right outside of Washington, DC. And um, it was a really a cool melting pot of, of music because every tour, um, every you know national tour went through DC. So I got to see a ton of bands growing up. I mean, I saw, uh, pretty much every band that I loved, I saw um, in DC or around DC. And so I was really fortunate to grow up around so much live music. And um, it shaped, uh, hugely shaped how I listened to music and how I perceived these musicians. And um, by the time it was time to go to school, I didn't really, I knew I loved music, but I didn't know what that meant in terms of a job. I, I knew so little about the music business that I, I just wasn't aware of it at all. So I just got a communications degree um, in DC. And then I, um, there, there's where I started uh, sort of getting the idea that photography could even be a thing. You know, it's funny, I, I just, when you're a kid, you don't, think you don't look at an album and think that someone took the photo, which is part of the magic of a great album cover, right? Is that you're not really aware of the, that they scheduled a shoot and they picked out clothes and they sat there and they thought about it and they posed or whatever. So it wasn't until, you know, I was almost probably 19 where it dawned on me that all these images I'd been seeing over the years were taken by somebody and they were taken by someone whose job it was to photograph musicians. And I guess because you hadn't, did you always have a, an eye or did you like as a kid carry around a, a, a little 35 mil or anything? Or was you, were you just no. intrigued by? It's so it? funny. People always ask me like if I, if, if like photography, if I was always into cameras or if I was always like taking apart cameras and putting them together. And the the honest answer is no, I was always really obsessed with music. And I, I was at a certain point, you know, I was trying to figure out how I could contribute to music. And I knew I wasn't a musician. I knew I wasn't born to do that. I, I don't have that thing. And so I thought, okay, well, I could be a manager or a publicist, but those seemed really nebulous to me and those seemed really vague. Um, so yeah, it, photography for me was just a vehicle to 
deliver something and collaborate something with a musician. Um, wow. And, so and did I, you pick up a camera and just go out there? Or how did it start? Yeah, you know, in, in the, my first couple years of college, I, um, I got a camera. My parents got me a camera. And uh, I would take pictures of my friends. And it was through being at school, meeting local musicians in D.C. who were playing gigs or whatever, um, that I started to think, okay, well, what if I took pictures of this singer? And the, the singers themselves really encouraged me because they wanted free pictures, you know. So I just started taking pictures in a way that started to show itself to me that I could take a promotional photo. I, at first, I just thought, you know, if I could take a photo that someone used on a flyer to promote their show, that would be unbelievable. That would be such a win because then I could probably get into the show for free. You know, I, I feel like photography is one of music photography is one of those things where you can immediately add value because the artist wants photos of themselves, but doing it is expensive and artists don't yeah. have money. And yeah. if you are a budding photographer, say I'll shoot you for free. Yeah. Not many like up and coming artists will say no to that. <laughs> oh, totally. And you know, I would sell merch. I would carry stuff. You know, I, I was trying to find any way in because I, I I didn't know anybody. I had no connections. You know. Um, I was just a fan. I used to wait outside of um, venues. To I would try and hear sound check through the walls of the venues, and I would wait outside after to try and meet bands. And um, and so I just thought, man, what what is it like to be on the other side of this barricade? What is it like to work with a musician in any capacity? And and yeah, you know, when I was eighteen, nineteen, I figured out I could probably take a picture. Would that that would be the fastest most direct line of communication with a, with the musician. And, um, and it's a way to be needed by them, you know, and a way to give, um, because I was just, I was so in awe. It was the closest thing to magic that I, I could imagine was, um, being in, in a room with a musician I loved, you know, it, it just seemed, it's like how people think of movie stars or something like, well, what must it be like to have lunch with George Clooney or something? And it's like, you know, that's, that's how I thought about, you know, no doubt, you know, I was like, Oh, how can I how can I be around that, you know? Does not to jump forward too much, but has that gone away with the amount of artists that you photographed? That people do say, which is different for you because your occupation, but they say don't meet your heroes, right? Does it or are you just like you know your job and it is what it is? It's not like you can still have that distance from admiring them as a fan as much as you are. No, I, I still get really, really um excited. I, I think that there, there, are, there are moments I've had where I am photographing somebody that I, I spent lots of money on seeing when I was younger. And I still that, you know, that kid in me is like, I can't believe you're allowing me in a room with you, you know, and I can't believe that this person's asking me for direction or asking me about what the direction, you know, what the vibe should be. So yeah, no, no, that never goes away. I think that's the whole that's the payoff of the job. You know, the payoff of this job is not um, like status or coolness. The payoff is um, a band you love looking you in the eyes and saying, you know, what do you see for us? You know, what do you see for these wow. photos? That's that's like, that's the check. That's the money, you know? That's, um, it, 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 it's really, really satisfying to me and really like life affirming that, you know, when that happens. And most creatives, I guess, or anyone in this industry has a, a break moment, perhaps like a big break moment. Um, yeah. I did read something about Regina Spector. I don't know if that was that, but like what, what, what was that moment where either like you knew you had made it or you could be successful at it or that you were legitimate and not someone that was a, just a fan that could take photos, but like this is the real thing. Yeah, so I moved to New York when I was 24 after spending a couple of years, you know, sort of shooting every band in D.C. Uh, and, I, and I sort of ran out of bands. And so I moved to New York um, with with almost no friends, no connections. I, I didn't, there was no job waiting for me here. I sort of just, you know, on a prayer moved here. And the first thing that helped me a lot was... Um, you know, because it, for my job, you, you have to shoot for labels, right? Like a record label has to, at some point, commission you to take a photo. That's that's the most legitimizing platform for someone in my position is like 
being asked to shoot an album cover. And the first time that really happened for me for with a major label was Regina Spector. Yeah, she um, I met her through her husband and I was a fan, of course. But, you know, she was on Warner Brothers Records and I, you know, I had I was I had not shot. I, I had shot for local D.C. labels and local D.C. bands. But, you know, I, I'd never been commissioned by a label. So she sort of she did this thing where she allowed me completely into her life. Uh, and, and she allowed me to come to every press event, every talk show, um, every opportunity to photograph her. She's, she's just said, come. And so for maybe six or seven months, um, when I first moved here, the first year I moved here, I, I got a real quick access, you know, to, publicists and agents and and label people and and other artists all through shooting her album her first couple of album covers and it it was life-changing for me you know because suddenly I you know I could go to Fallon and Letterman and I could shoot backstage and I could like learn how to shoot in different places right I could learn you know that if you're in you're in the NBC corridor for SNL the light is terrible and if you want to document something there you have to do be there and do it. There's re there's really no way to practice for shooting, um, you know, backstage at these places. And, you know, she played Radio City and she played the Beacon Theater and all these sort of iconic venues in New York. And she just, for no reason, let me come to all of them. And we got along really well. And I, um, and everybody, it's felt like a lot of people saw those photos and, it was right when she was sort of rising up and it just opened so many doors for me. And, and it was really exactly what I wanted to be doing was like shooting, um, a, a sort of breakthrough songwriter singer. Um, and it, yeah, that helped me a lot. That was, that was the first artist where I, um, I felt like this could be a, a real job. This could, this could be my life, you know? What do you think it was that made her, open herself up to you was it uh you know you met her through her husband you said was it was it trust was it just a feeling of you know knowing that you were you had you know you were eager or, or maybe was it something else you know I think a lot of um musicians have had really terrible experiences being photographed it's it's really intimate it's really really intimate to allow somebody in your space and to allow someone to point something at you and not know what it looks like and not know what you're what, what you're doing with these photos. And so I think like many artists, she just had, she had sort of gone through the major label, um, terrible shoot experience starter package. And I think by the time I met her, she was working on an album and she was just like ready to collaborate with one person for photos and not constantly be meeting new photographers and you know, she was doing a, a ton of press at that time and I think it just becomes really laborious to every couple of weeks meet a new person and I think it was timing I think it was you know it was the right time it was I was really really available for it I really wanted it I really wanted to impress her and I really wanted to do a good job and so I did whatever I could to um make myself um, as much of a collaborator as I could. Like, I really wanted her to love the photos. So yeah, I think eagerness, I think timing, I think past experiences for her. And I think just, um, I just, I just wanted it. I saw it, you know, I, I was like, I'm going to do all your photos. I, I, I feel like I made a decision or something and it, you know, it, came. it sounds like the, the age, you know, the age that you were, and willingness to throw yourself in and everything. And I, th I think a lot about like music and how a, a lot of great music requires this timing of a lot of things working at the same time, where yeah. there's like, because there's a whole creative community around it. It's finding the right stylist, it's finding the right photographer, it's finding yeah. the right makeup to really like capture what you're doing. And a, some, a lot of the time it doesn't work and clearly it worked for her. Do you, do you sense that as well? That like you as a cog in their musical expression a very, it's a, a very important one. Yeah, and I, you know, I think that a lot of musicians are, they don't know what to do when it comes when it comes to photos, right, or videos or whatever. The visual part of it, 
I think eludes a lot of people. I think they work so hard on the music and they work so hard on the performance and they feel like they did their work, you know? Like I made the album, I got the producer, I got the team together, I got signed. And I think, you know, photos are the last part of the process, right? You make an album and 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 you go through all this emotional stuff and you you all these hours and then and then it's time to do the photo. So I meet people at the end of their cycle of sort of like, you know, trauma, like, you know, like going through all of the, um, the emotions that come along with making a record, right? So when I meet people, they're usually pretty tired of themselves. They're tired of hearing and thinking about themselves. And there's an element of just, please make this easy, you know? And so I think a, a photographer's job or a director's job or whatever, our job is to make a space where a musician doesn't have to continue to have anxiety about this project. I think it's like, they want to be in good hands. You know, they want to be able to trust you. It's, it's, a, it's a lot about trust, I think. So I think it, it would make sense to, to go on to the process. I wanted to, I want to go into like, capturing the essence of music but maybe i'll skip that to go to this part because we're talking about it now like yeah feeling comfortable uh setting a tone and a vibe and and uh setting things right so that they feel like they can be themselves and be trusted in that space yeah. how do you do that do you listen to their music do you set is that are there fragrances in the room do you go to them do they come to you how do you what's the process to make them get the best out of them uh, in visually? Yeah, I, I always think of a photo shoot as um, as like a little party that that I'm hosting, right? It's like I have to welcome people in. I have to have a nice environment for them to be in. I tell them where to put their jacket. There's water here. The bathroom is there. I think the the beginning of it and maybe the most important part of it is like I have to realize that someone's coming into my space and someone is coming into an unfamiliar space and I have to make sure that they are able to get there easily and get there with as much calm as possible. Because if, if a shoot starts off with anxiety, I often find that um, the whole thing will be anxiety, you know? So I think setting a tone is really good. I think I have to be in a good mood. Um, I think that the photographer has to be relaxed and not be nervous. You know, I've had, I've had, moments where I'm shooting um, somebody that it's a really stressful, it's like um, the circumstances are stressful where there's not a lot of time and uh, something very specific has to be done. And I find that in those moments, if I have any sense of urgency or rushing or fear, then the person shuts down. You know, I can, I can see it in their eyes that they're just, they are, um, you know, people feel that energy. And so, I have to make sure that my energy is clean. You know, I, I cannot bring my baggage into a shoot. I can't put that on a musician. So I think the most important part of that is just setting the initial tone, the, the sort of beginning handshake of it. Um, and then once they feel comfortable, it's it's so much easier to to communicate. You know, how do you get into that mindset? Do you do you go through a process before it starts? Do you just have a chill morning or day, or are you so prepared that you could just go into it and turn it on yeah it's called disassociation it's called compartmentalization you um yeah you go somewhere else you you i mean you know i i mean geez i if i told if i told you the wild things i've done right before photo shoots um <laughs> <laughs> you know like i had a root canal once um and i i it and i had to have it that day and it, the shoot couldn't be canceled so i I remember going, I remember walking into the studio just like with, just full of Percocet, just high, high as a kite, you know, swollen mouth and numb. I was numb, but, you know, I could not cancel it. And so you sort of learn to, um, you know, the adrenaline of, it's like a performer or anything. It's like you, you something kicks in where you're like, this is my job. I have to do this. I'm not going to um, come come off as weak or ill-equipped. So yeah, you just have to compartmentalize those feelings and, and you could be in a terrible, terrible mood, you know, but millions of people in the world go to work in a terrible mood, right? And they, and they learn how to 
put it away. And it's the same thing, you know, it's, it's just, um, I have to walk in there with, with clean energy. It's not fair otherwise, you know. No, totally. I think uh, you're there to, to produce something for them. And yeah. I think what hearing what you said is really interesting because, you know, the, on one hand you get a brief and you're working with multiple layers of, of people with eyes on you. Yeah. At the same time, photography is an art and you are an artist within that. And uh, having your own presence is important. Is yeah. is important, but it's also like you've you you've, you've got the, perhaps the publicist there, the art director, the, yeah. the the manager, the label, and they're like, just do the thing, do the thing that we want you to do. Yeah. And you you can't just be full artist mode of like watch me do magic because then that can set the tone off. I, I gather. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. Uh, you know, I think I have moments of indulgence where I'm at a shoot and there are publicists and managers and agents there. And a part of me just wants to be like, I, I want to be able to be as eccentric um, as uh, what you think of an artist as being where I uh, tell everyone to clear the room and I put up a black fabric and it's just me and the artist. And, you know, I, I have, I have fantasies of, of sort of like being 50 years old and, and sort of pulling that power move and, and, um, and 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 it working, you know. I don't think I'm there yet. I think it it would it just comes off really bratty for me to do it now. But there, yeah, there is something in me that has to acknowledge I'm an artist and I'm I'm a collaborator here. But I am doing something of service, right? I am I am serving. I'm not the subject. That I, you know, I, I can't be the subject of the shoot. I can't be the star of the shoot. It has to be the person I'm shooting because if a photographer makes something solely about them, um, and I think maybe in the fashion world this happens a little bit. Fashion photography is sort of like about the photographer. It's like about the, it's about Mario Testino and not the model he's shooting. But in what I do, it's it's the complete opposite. Um, it has to be about the band and it has to be about the band's comfort because it is really impossible to photograph someone if they're not comfortable. I mean, it, it is physically impossible. They, they, they tense up all of their, all of their muscles become tense, their shoulders, their jaw, everything hardens up and the photo is bad. I'm glad that you said service because I was kind of dancing around that word because like, I didn't want to come off as rude, but it, it's true they, yeah. in, in the sense that like, what you're doing is for a commercial purpose that is not exploitation, but expressing that the the the, the art that they produced and is um, you know a building block in that journey as well. And yeah. I when I see, like I said at the beginning, all the impressive artists that you photographed, and I see your Instagram, another one, another one, another, and the the thing that I always think, one, I think. Wow, incredible, like an, another incredible artist. But then I also think, and we haven't spoken that much. We've had a few calls when I mean, we work together, but I, what what rings true to me is like, well, of course, because Shervin's so nice, like <laughs> so nice. And, you know, I found you online and, and briefed you online. We've never met in person. And you made that process for myself feel really comfortable and feel like, you know, whether you're working with big artists or small artists, that it's it's all welcome. And I feel like that that has to be a reason why you have been able to photograph so many people is because of your openness and how how kind you are. Yeah. Do, I mean, do you the think? Tr yeah, the truth is, is anyone can take a photo, right? Like what the the thing that I'm bringing there is is my experience and my um sensibility and my idea, right? So, um, yeah, I think everyone has a friend that does photography and everyone has a cousin that has a great camera and everyone has a, a something that, that can take a photo. And, and so I think it's, um, it has to be about the experience and it has to be about my connection with this person. It has to be about me trying to give 50% and them giving 50%. And the real magic of it, the real sort of perfect thing is when is when we both meet in the middle and we both give the same amount and it works and it's and it's right. 
there's really no better feeling that I've come across in my life than you, when you take a photo for somebody and it's exactly what it should be. It's exactly how I saw it. And it's exactly what the project needs. There's something um, really close to um, spiritual about it because for me at least, because it's, it's two creative people seeing each other, you know, it's like, we both feel seen and there's really nothing better than feeling validated by someone you respect or by someone who's talented. And there's nothing better than validating someone who is talented and someone who wants respect. So it's a real, it's a real meeting, you know, and, um, and yeah, so it has to be about personal, my personality and the, and the chemistry there. And, you know, I'll be honest, sometimes there's no chemistry. Sometimes, um, you know, you know, when you meet somebody and you just immediately don't like them for no reason. So that happens in my job. And then I have to spend three hours caring about them. You know, I mean, a, a photo shoot is really just, you know, it's part party and part first date and part um, like two painters trying to paint the same painting. And so when when there is no chemistry and when there's no connection if you know that it becomes work that's when it that's when it feels like work right i'm sure with your job or anyone listening here um it, it feels like work when it's hard and when it's easy it feels like you're flying you know it feels like you're you've taken off on the runway and it's a clear day and there's no clouds and you know so it's a, it's a it can be an extreme job in that way but like most creative jobs are really um a mixture of uh, the worst experience and and the most rewarding, right? I mean, oh, completely. It's it's both be beautiful and quite mundane yeah. um, at times. Do you yeah. how much how much agency do you have over? I guess we're starting to get into that area of like capturing the essence of music and how, like I, a lot of what you do is in studio. A lot of what you do is outdoors. Um, some sometimes the the backdrop is is a huge element of it. Sometimes it's it's their face do you how do you is it the teams that dictate to that that to you or do you do you listen to their music and then kind of say this is how it's going to be i know the exact spot for it yeah i mean what what you're trying to do with a photo is to um visually represent the sound right so the idea is that you take a photo for a band and someone sees that photo on a billboard or a website or whatever, and they have a they have a, a more clear idea of what that's going to sound like, right? So, um, the faster you can do that, um, the more successful the picture will be, right? So, for example, if you're shooting a rock and roll band or a alt rock band, and you um, put them in a, in a field of really beautiful pink daisies and really beautiful pink flowers. Um, if you, if you choose not to make that somehow subversive, you're going to misrepresent the band, right? Because the music doesn't sound like a field of beautiful flowers. Um, and so if you're going to put them in a field, you have to figure out a way where that those flowers have to represent something in the music or it has to rep there has to be some darkness in it um so i've i've been really fortunate in that people that i shoot on on the whole mostly let me do what i want and they let me um they trust me to like figure out how to get the photo that's going to communicate that um you know it's it's a a picture of a band is just a promotional tool. It's it's a way for an, a person in the world to understand a band quicker or understand a musician quicker. Um, so yeah, I do listen to the music, of course. I look at other photos of them. I, I look at um, their aesthetic and I try and figure out, okay, well, what's the name of this project and what's the name of this these songs? What, how do I communicate what this is as quickly as possible. Sometimes it's just about a portrait and sometimes a portrait, you know, it's like a close up photo of someone's face who's a country singer is going to be a different photo than uh, for a piano playing singer songwriter. Even though it's the same idea, it's a close up of a face. 
it's going to be different, right? The way you light it is going to be different and the way you um, edit it is going to be different. So I'm just trying to find the, the quickest route between uh, someone seeing a photo and them understanding what that project is. So there's, there's background research, there's listening, there's, there's some thinking. And then when you said earlier about like, you know, when you capture the thing you're seeing, it's such a, it's like a spiritual thing. Do yeah. you think that you can go in to a shoot prior to meeting them going, I know, I know what it is. Or is it more of a, you get there, you've got almost like the foundation to play with. And then when you're at literally behind the lens, you start to feel that thing that you're looking for. You know, what's crazy is you're kind of always chasing. You're always chasing it. Like, when, when it works for me and when it's best for me, the picture's already done. I can, it's already finished in my mind. I can see it. I can see it and I'm, and I'm walking towards it, right? So like if, I, if I'm inspired by a, a musician or a band and I'm asked to do their photo, oftentimes I envision the finished picture, right? And, and I'll be honest, most time I don't get there. I, you know, it's, it's not a straight shot. It's not a, um, it's not a direct line that I can walk straight to that final image. I'm, I'm dancing around it. You know, you're, you're, you're going around the back, you're going to the side, you're looking at it from this way, but there is a sort of a definitive version of a photo that I'm, that I'm going for. And I've, and I've, I've come close a couple times, but ultimately my life's work and my sort of journey in this photography game is, trying to make it so that I have a shorter distance to walk to that final image, right? Like the more I do it, I'm trying to more quickly get to the vision, more quickly get to the completed thing that I see in my mind. Um, and it's hard. It's hard to, you know, I, I would imagine musicians say this sometimes too, is that um, they can hear the song finish sometimes, you know, or, or a painter maybe can see the painting already, but doing it physically is hard. You have to have technical skill to do the thing you see in your mind or to play the music that you hear in your mind. And I, I really identify with that. I really, that I relate to that idea a lot. Um, and that it keeps me going after it. It keeps me trying, you know, otherwise I would be really discouraged. But I know that there's a, I know there's a time in my life where I'll be able to, within a day, get to that final vision. Um, right now it, you know, it takes me, it takes me longer. I think that the, the people that I speak to that are really creative always have a hunger, uh, full stop. They have a hunger to, to, for, for truth. They have a hunger to, to yeah. progress and learn and, and evolve. Um, and that's very clear with what you do. I think what, how does it, how do you feel because photography is a part of, within this interaction in, in that, obviously you've got the artists, you've got the music, you have styling that you may, I, I gather, don't always have a lot of control over. The, the outfits might be awful. The makeup might be awful. Yeah. The, the weather might be terrible. The, you might not retouch, color grade, whatever. You might not do the final album. How do you manage all those things when you get there? You've got this image in your head and they turn up in a bathrobe. Or, you know, in like a, you know, in, in spandex or whatever. And you've got to be like, okay, this is what the stylist has given me. And I didn't think about it like that. How do you interact and interplay with that? Well, you know, it's, it's, um, it's like a, it's like an evolving and moving thing. So for example, if I, if I go to a shoot and the stylist has brought clothes that don't at all align with what I was thinking and the makeup artist doesn't do at all what I was thinking in that moment what what my job becomes is to I have to act as a glue for those separate parts right so there's a musician and then there's a makeup artist there's a publicist there's a stylist there's a manager all of those people are looking to me to now complete the puzzle and finish this photo. So I have to put aside my own, and this is where ego comes in, you know, and I've, I've, there have been times I've really struggled, struggled with this because I, I, I really have an ego, you know, and sometimes I go in there and I'm like, this isn't right. And it has to look different. And the wall has to be yellow and the, you know, the, the jacket has to be black, but 
I have to be wise enough to put that aside because again, I am servicing the musician, right? So if I throw a tantrum at a shoot and stop the shoot because my my vision isn't being met or my, you know, my idea isn't being fulfilled, it becomes selfish, you know? It becomes really um, kind of arrogant for me to derail that. What I have to do is say, okay, these are the elements I have. You know, it's like you're trying to paint and instead of having all the colors, you you suddenly have four colors. So you, you still have the urge to paint. You still want to make a painting, right? But maybe the sky is not going to be blue in this painting. I have to make the sky charcoal. It, it's a rain, it has to be a rainy day. And when I envisioned it, it was a, it was a sunny day. But I have to make it work. You know, my job is to make it work. And I have to deliver something to this, um, to this artist. You know, I, I can't waste everyone's time and money. Um, so there's a really practical element that comes into this, just like, you know, with your, with your work or people listening, it's like the dreamer in me that wants to just walk around making decisions and, and sort of impulsively choosing things has to, um, realize that this is a business, you know, this is, um, a company has paid for these photos and, and they don't care if, if, I, if I don't like the jackets and they don't care if I don't like the makeup. It doesn't matter. You know, they, they're depending on me to deliver something at the end of that shoot. And it has to be good. And not only does it have to be good, it has to be serviceable and usable to all the outlets that need these photos, right? The publicist has to like it. The agent has to be able to use it to sell the shows. The um, Spotify DSPs have to use it to, um, you know, go there. So, it, you know, I, I snap out of the um, the guy who just wants to paint, you know, with all the colors. And I, and I have to become the guy that um, is doing a job. And it's hard. You know, when I, was, when I was younger, I had a real chip on my shoulder. You know, when I first moved to New York, I had that sort of blind arrogance of a young person. Um, I had a lot of that. I had a lot of... Um, I was big for my bridges. You know, I would, I would shoot bands and I would sort of, you know, cause I'd come from DC where I, I literally, I shot every band that came through DC and I, and I, I could get into any show and I, you know, I was sort of like 22 and I was like the DC guy, you know, and it's such a small pond. And I came to New York and my first sort of six months in New York, I was like, <laughs> like I'm Sherman from DC you know, and, and I quickly found out that absolutely no one cares about that. And, and they, they will not hire you. You know, they, they don't care about the town you come from, uh, dynamics. So, you know, long story long is that I, um, I have to, I have to do what every artist has to do at some point, which is compromise. And I think the more you can learn to hold hands, with the anxiety that comes with compromising, the quicker you can get through it, you know? Does that sometimes, those unexpected compromises create unexpected magic? That you, is there a third uh, reality where you have something in your mind, it's the complete opposite and something comes together which is like you are more than thrilled with? Sometimes, um, but if I'm honest, not a lot. If I'm honest, I am... I'm trying to just do something that I will be proud of and that the band will be proud of at that point. I, it's, it's not really about making magic for me at that point. Sometimes it does, you know, there have been moments where I've been in LA and, and I didn't think we were shooting on a roof and we, here we are on a roof, but then the, the sun sets in the most amazing way. And the, you know, it catches her eye in the most amazing way. And I'm like, wow, you know, like, I feel like a king, but it's rare. It's, 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 it's hard. You know, you have a lot of people at a shoot looking, looking at you to get it done before four or whenever the band's flight is. Um, I, I remember I was, um, I got to shoot the killers two last summer, two, two summers ago. And I remember the publicist who's a really amazing woman named Jen was, She's basically like, you know, you have, I was shooting for Rolling Stone and she said, the band will do it. Um, they will, you know, you get to do it, but it's literally going to be like six minutes. You have six minutes. And so in my, in my mind, I think, okay, I get to shoot one of the biggest, coolest bands, right? 
and here I am, I'm going to have this alone time with him. And in, and in the span of six minutes, I have to get something that works. Because actually, if I don't, I won't be able to shoot for this publication again. And I won't be able to shoot certainly a band of this caliber again. And I think that only because I'm in my late 30s now, it, I can handle that. If, that. if this happened to me when I was 26, I can guarantee you I would have taken about 50 blurry photos. <laughs> I would have made a terrible impression with everybody there. And I would have blown the opportunity. But, you know, something happens when you've just done it thousands of times. You know, you 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 learn to step into a, another place where you're like, I am here to do this job and it has to get done. Wow. And um, and you got it done. And I got it done. Yeah. And and I mean, yeah, it was wild. The, the lights behind them in the photo uh, are just the headlights of their limo. <laughs> that, oh wow! Yeah, that, you know when here's a little insider baseball. When a band is really big, they don't walk from their dressing room to the stage. If they're playing a big festival outside, they are driven. They're driven in a car, and the car was just parked there waiting for me to be done shooting them to take them. So I, I ran to the driver because I, you know, the band's coming. I ran to, I go, can you high beam, can you turn your high beams on? We're in the middle of a field. There's nothing there. I have no light. I, I asked him to turn his uh, high beam on and he did it. And so the only light I had was the, the silhouetted uh, limo high beam. It was wow. pretty wild. It, it felt, it felt like I was in a movie. It felt like uh, in Almost Famous when that kid is like, going backstage to meet the band. It, it was really, um, it was an experience. I really, I love that. Well, let's talk about more of your iconic photographs or, or, or as you define iconic perhaps, or like the ones that you feel like most important, relevant, interesting, uh, or, or had an interesting story behind it. Are there any that come to mind that stand out in your portfolio or in your experiences that, that something happened? That, that was unexpected or something that makes it a, a particularly special to you? Yeah, I mean, man, I've been so grateful to have like a lot of memorable, um, you know, times. One that sticks out for me a lot is uh, I got to shoot David Byrne about a year and a half ago from Talking Heads. You guys, you guys, I think your listeners know David Byrne, right? Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> and it was really amazing because, you know, you hear all these stories. There's a, there's a lot of uh, mythology around this man, right? He sort of a man of New York and this man about town. He rides a bicycle everywhere and it's sort of eccentric, right? And um, it was a pretty really cold day. It was November. And the you know, usually uh, someone that big comes with a bunch of people. You know, I, I, you rarely are alone with a big artist like that. They, they, they have like an assistant and a publicist and a manager and blah, blah, blah. And so I get an email from the publicist that says he's, he's actually going to be, he, he requested to come alone. He wants to be alone. And he wants to do it outside against this one particular wall in um, Soho. And... Um, you know, and I thought it's cold, right? Like, I'm surprised he, they don't want me to get a studio. And, you know, this was like a promo photo for something. I was like kind of surprised. I was like, you know, this man want, doesn't he want to be comfortable? And so I said, okay, you know, what wall? And she told me like the coordinates of this wall. And, um, and she's like, he'll be, wear, he'll, be, he'll be wearing the one thing he'll wear for the photos. Like there's no changing. So, okay. And so I go to this wall at 10 in the morning in Soho on a, on a weekday. It's pretty empty. And I, out of the corner of my eye, I, you know, I'm waiting for a car to pull up. I'm waiting for like some kind of fanfare, right? And um, out of the corner of my eye, I see a man on a bicycle in an all blue suit on a blue bicycle riding up to the street next to me. And it's far away and I go, that looks like David Byrne, but that can't be him because why would that be him? So I'm like looking in this direction and sure enough, it's David Byrne and he rides his bike over and he puts his hand out and he says, you're Shervin. And I go, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, yes, Mr. Byrne. <laughs> I, yes, hi. And he's like, great. Well, this is the wall I'd love to use and this is the suit I'm going to wear. And he hops off his bike and he no doesn't lock it, just puts the leans the bike against there, has a basket on it. I mean, like truly out of a film. 
he and he stands and his suit perfectly matches the wall like he had thought about this he he got he found a suit that matched this wall and he stands in front of it and we take photos for maybe maybe 10 minutes maybe 12 minutes and it's cold it's very very it's a cold november day in new york and um you know we i show him a couple and he likes it and i'm sort of just like looking around like you know, I'm in sort of disbelief about this whole thing. And then I show him a couple. He's like, that looks great. And he unbuttons his jacket. He takes off his jacket. And he's wearing a black turtleneck. He puts his jacket on the basket of the bike. He shifts to my right. And now he's not against the wall. He's against the, you know, he's, and there's an alley behind him. And he's like, I thought we could do some against this alley with my turtleneck. And I was like, great. Maybe four minutes there. And he looks at it and he goes, great. He puts his hand out, shakes my hand. He says, thank you so much for your time. He puts on his jacket, hops on his bike, rides away by himself. And I'm standing there freezing cold with my camera in my hand thinking, did that just happen? Is, is this a weird dream where I, am I dreaming that I shot David Byrne and it was the most David Byrne experience of my life? You know, like where, you know, it's like when someone really lives up to how you think they're going to be. Wow. Um, and it was a really, a really memorable shoot for me. I, I always think about that shoot and how how gentle and how um, elegant he was and how calm. And it just, it felt so natural and he had no hangups and there, you know, it was just really, really pro, like really, really... Um, Something I'll remember forever is this um, sort of legendary man sort of walking up to me, parking his bike and just like allowing me to photograph him for these minutes and sort of with with no, not a care in the world, not a, you know, just really, really amazing um, example of when something feels surreal because it goes so well, you know? That I feel like there's so many layers to that. It it sounds very like you said, the man about town, New York. He's on his bike. Yeah. He doesn't care, but he yeah. cares. There's a gentleness. There's a, an absurdity to it as well. Yeah, there's this yeah it was like a cartoon. I mean, it was just so. It, he he's such a caricature, and but 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 also a person, you know. And and um and those moments for me are really um exciting. I've had a couple. I I shot Joan Jett last year. And that was also an experience just because, you know, I had have grown up just knowing so much about her. Um, I, you know, just all these, I shot Alanis Morissette a couple of weeks ago and I was like, you know, just surreal moments of like, yeah, I've paid money to see you perform. I, like, and now you're here, you know, and, and, and yeah, I've, I've really, um, I shot Paramore recently and that was such a trip because, I mean, it's just Paramore, man. It's just really wild. So, yeah, uh, yeah, and I've, it's uh, it's such a pleasure, man. It's really so. Um, I get, I still am that kid. I still get so excited, and I think something I always try and tell younger photographers who reach out to me or people that ask me, I always tell them like, to um, you have to figure out as quickly as you can why you're doing it, and you have to figure out. Um, that if why you're doing it is going to be a good enough reason to sustain you for a long time. Because if you're doing it for money or if you're doing it for social status or like to go to parties or whatever, it, you're going to get tired of it really quick. It's a really, it's a really um, laborious job. But if you can find a reason that um, like gives you t tingles, you know, that gives you like that, that feeling of love and that feeling of excitement, then you'll do it forever. You know, you'll, if you can find a way into um, creating art that makes you feel, gives you butterflies and makes you just have adrenaline, then you'll be able to do it for as long as you want. But if you're doing it to be the cool guy who um, takes pictures and has follower, a lot of followers, then you won't, you know? So it's, you know, because sometimes you can sort of tell if that people are doing it for clout or just sort of to be around famous people. And I always, I always get the sense that they won't be doing it for longer than a couple of years. It's, it's too hard. But I because I, they burn I, bridges or because they try I think too hard. Or? They burn out because then what happens is they do become the cool guy. They get all the followers, 
And then the, they've reached the, um, they got the golden ticket. They got the thing, right? They got the status. And then they, it's boring, you know? But f- to me, the people who are like lifelong creatives and lifelong artists are the ones that they're doing it because they want to give more than they take. And they're doing it because the act of giving makes them excited. Um, the act of giving that photo to Dave Byrne, David Byrne, is what was such a turn on to me. Not being close to a famous person. The exciting thing was giving him something that he can use. Um, giving him a photo, like the idea of giving him a photo of himself that he likes enough to represent him in the world is such a wild turn on for me. I mean, it, it like, it makes me buzz, you know? But if I just yeah. wanted to shoot him so I could take a selfie with him and so I, I could um, tell people that I, I, I'm friends with a famous guy, it's going to stop being fun, you know? There's no exchange. There's no, um, there's no energy exchange in that to me. I could be wrong, it's but a, it, it's a, no. It's a, it makes so much sense. It's a beautiful thing, and I can kind of sense that, in a sense, from your social media. It's not like you're in everyone's um, IG pages, going like, "Oh my gosh, you look great today." Like, <laughs> remember how we hung out, and like now we're buddies. <laughs> it just doesn't feel like you're that type of person. You're you you like you said. Yeah. It's, and and not to make it about what I do, but I when I we talked about the very beginning about like the growth and uh, uh, I guess resonance that I've had. And it is very much yeah. like I am passionate about music. I'm passionate about providing something to the audience that they might not have heard before. That makes me happy more than, oh, look, I've wanted to be an influencer or whatever you call me now. And I think it's- Well, the compelling, the compelling thing about your page to me is that, like I told you this before, but um, wh- when you're watching someone who really loves music be themselves and talk about music in a way that is trying to exchange energy with people, it's um, exciting, you know? And I think it's um, it's like if I, if I was watching your page and you were just sort of talking about your connections and the people that you've worked with and the people that you know and your sort of status, it, it would be exciting for a couple of days because you're like, oh, cool, like this guy's cool. And then, um, and then it would very quickly become not exciting, you know, because I, I, as a consumer of music and art and everything, I want to feel an energy exchange. I mean, that's why we love music, right? Music is an energy exchange, right? The reason why um, St. Vincent or David Byrne or any of these people are successful is because they are giving as much as they're taking, right? They're, they're giving us um, a, a emotional energy. And I think it's the same thing goes with creators, right? Like you and I have the same job essentially in that we are, our job is to give hopefully more than we take, right? For you, it's information. And for you, it's entertainment. And for me, it's photos, right? I have to give more and you have to give more. And if we continue to do that, people will respond to it, right? Because people love um, exchanging with someone creative. They love taking from us and they love giving to us. But I feel like, you know, we are in a time now, which is, it's so boring to even say this, but in the in sort of influencer culture, it's a lot of taking, right? It's a lot of uh, numbers and statistics. And people tell me all the time, dude, all the time. They're like, why don't you have more followers on Instagram? And why, you know, why are you um, making an app that makes people's photos look like your photos? And why aren't you, um, you know, like all this like weird branding marketing stuff. And my, my answer is always just that, yeah, like I'm not here to have Instagram followers. Um, I'm not here to make an app. That's not, that's not how I want to give. Um, and if I was to do that, it would be disingenuous. And I think people would be able to tell, right? And if I was taking selfies with every band I shot, um, it would become really obvious to you and other people that, oh, he's just sort of, um, he's just trying to be like a on the scene kind of guy. And that's boring it's a boring story you know yeah yeah it's a it's a boring you, you narrative you see through it, it you see yeah, through it so just, quickly it's you know you don't really see bjork doing that right you don't you don't see great it's like the people who have devoted their lives to music are are in their 60s and they're still interested in giving you know what i mean like bjork is 
or, you know, I'm using her as an example. I love Bjork, but it's like, she's giving art to us and she's not being like, I'm a legend, give me awards and do tributes to me. She's not taking in that way. She's giving as much as she's taking. And so, so I think it's like, I want my dream for myself and my dream for like my generation of artists is to try and figure out the reason why we're doing it. And then, um, and figure out if that reason is is good enough to sustain um, a life's work, you know? I feel like being interested is timeless. And I think yeah. that when you talk about Björk and you talk about David Byrne, or I talk a lot about Ryuichi Sakamoto, it's like yeah. they're, they're interested in everything. And they're, yeah. like, they're always looking for new things and they're always just excited. And I feel like people like perhaps like us, it's about that interest and that passion and it all, I, I get the sense that, you know, there's an entrepreneurialism to you that is about being, uh, I guess, like co confident and comfortable yeah. with it turning out because you're passionate about it, not because you're like trying to orchestrate the perfect thing and turn yourself into the most famous perfect photographer. Like I said, I'm impressed all the time by what you post and it's because of that interest and that entrepreneurialism of trust in many ways in the process, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. My, the artists I'm most inspired by, be it photography or not, or whatever, are um, all the artists that I care most about are people who um, have a, have a purpose in what they do and a vision for what they're doing. And they're not just sort of spinning, on the success wheel, you know, and, and listen, don't get me wrong. I love opportunities. I, I'm the, I'm the first guy to jump at a chance to shoot someone well-known or shoot someone, um, you know, big, but my purpose for it is to give something to them. I, I, I very rarely find myself wanting to take from successful people. I, I, it, it fills me with a lot more joy to shoot someone well-known and give them something that they've never had before or, or add to the sort of canon of their, their visual iconography. If I can, um, that is a, that is where the sweet stuff is for me. Because you're contributing to music history. It's like you see the books and the, the archives of iconic artists, whether it's Bob Dylan or whoever, and you, yeah. you are part of that. You're capturing that essence. One question I've wanted to ask you uh, as we wrap up, and maybe you can burst the bubble because I'm, I'm afraid the answer won't be what I want to hear. <laughs> uh, when you photograph up and coming establishing artists that might be buzzing or whatever, do you think you can tell when the person is more special than others? Do you think that you see someone early on and go, they've got it and it's going, it's going to be a thing or is it, you never know? I'll tell you what, I think my most honest answer to that question is I can, I can almost always tell when somebody has charisma and I can, I can always tell when someone has drive and, and has like a momentum in their being, right? Like it's impossible to photograph someone and not get some kind of um, emotional information from them. Right. So a lot of times, if I'm shooting somebody who's up and coming or new, I can, I think I can tell if they are, if they have the elements that it takes to withstand what's coming for them, which is a ton of criticism, a ton of comparing them to other people and a ton of um, obstacles. I can, I can sense the strength that they might have in that. Whether or not they'll make it and whether or not they'll, you know, this is going to be a huge star. I, I, here's where I burst the bubble. A lot of that is political and a lot of that is um, circumstantial and based on things that are financial and things that are out of the control of the quality of the music, right? But I, there have been moments where I have been photographing someone and I thought, wow, this is a star. Like this, this person, at least to me in my, in this d situation is special and they are inside of themselves in a way that 
the way that they hold themselves is special, you know, but man, it's, uh, this music business thing is a lot of, um, who, you know, and, and, and who's your dad and, um, <laughs> and who's your uncle, you know, who was that person or one of the people that you were like, they, they're a star or is that hard? Oh, I know. The, do you know the singer Yeba? Y yes. E B B A. So the first time I shot Yeba was before she was signed or before she had, it was like five years ago, six years ago. Um, I remember photographing her and I had heard a demo of her song um, Evergreen that wasn't out yet. And we were shooting the single cover for that song. And I remember she was very shy. She was painfully shy very introverted, very guarded, not um, not what you would uh, think of as like a boisterous, big voice singer or star. But there was a moment in photographing her where I saw, some, I saw co the confidence in her eyes and I saw her sort of step into a performative, like, serving up something in a photo. And I remember having the thought, this girl is really special. And I remember actually telling her manager at the time, I was like, this, um, there's something in this girl's eyes that like in a couple years, like when she, cause she was really young, she was like 19 or 20. I was like, when she grows up a little bit, this girl is gonna be someone. Because it, there's, Sometimes when you're shooting someone, there's like a moment where they, they let their guard down. There's a moment where they relax. And usually it's towards the end. And you can see who they are. You can see who they are, um, who they actually are. And for me, Yeba was someone who actually is a star and actually is extremely confident and extremely beautiful. Um, and for a moment I saw her believe it and it was really cool. And I, and, um, I, I remember having a really strong feeling about her, um, her presence in that moment. Wow. I think, I feel like you come across so many energies and so many personalities that yeah. you, you're bound to cease once in a, once every so often something that's yeah. different and being able to pick it. Yeah. Yes. And it's, and it's, you know, a lot of times that does happen and the, and the person doesn't, you know, become bigger or whatever, but it, it aligns sometimes. Sometimes, you know, you're shooting someone and you really, you think to yourself, like, I don't know what's going to happen with you, but something's going to happen with you. You know, like it, it can't not, it's, it's almost sort of, um, it's inevitable that this like thing will come out of them and, and it's, um, some people are just sort of dripping with uh, vibe, you know? And um, and it's it's cool to see it develop, you know? I'm old enough now where I, I, I someone I shot six, seven years ago could now be really big. And I, I got to see every um, part of it, every step of it. And sometimes I get to shoot them at different, you know, stages of success. And it's cool to be like, oh, now you're playing here. And oh, now you're on TV. And, you know, it's um, it's exciting. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Shervin Lanez speaks volumes. What else do we need to say? I think that you've, I could just grill you for hours. And I think like uh, the, the, the nerdy intrusive side of me is like, tell me about this person. Tell me about this person. <laughs> but that's, I'm refraining from that because that's not the point of this. I think what I'll I've tell learned, you off the podcast, <laughs> please. Um, what I've learned is just like, just about energy and openness, I think. And, and, uh, interest, like we said. And that co combining to to create you and your talent and your skills and your success is uh, I've taken so much away from. This. I have no doubt that people are going to take away so much from this because it's it's as much a lesson about life than it is about photography and music. It's about presence and and how you 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 fill a space. And uh, thank you, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank did, you. Did you? Would you like to uh, promote anything as we, <laughs> do you have a book coming out? Do we, do we have I anything want like that? My, my dream is to um, make a, make a hardcover book about a hundred New York bands I've shot. 
during my time here. And I'm going to do that at some point. I'm putting that okay. out now. I'm going to do it. Um, I haven't done it yet. But uh, when I when I do it, I, I would love. I would just love to have that kind of document, like that kind of like solidified, tangible thing that's like, here's my time in New York, my, my first 10 years in New York, and here's what that means. Um, but in terms of promoting stuff, I don't know. I guess go to my Instagram, look at that. Show and photo photo. with an F, not an a F. PH. <laughs> yeah, that's because I'm ethnic and um, I'm representing uh, brown people everywhere. Photo, F O T O. Yep, Spanish. <laughs> Chevron Linez. Thank you so much. Again, Sherwin Linez speaks volumes. Um, everyone, there'll be a bunch of links in the show notes and uh, we'll make sure that you see all the images that Sherwin is talking about. But once again, thank you so much for your time and thanks for doing this late. And, pleasure. Uh, see you later, everyone. See ya.